Chargers just signed Denzel Perriman, and I said last week that they would be looking at signing a linebacker in free agency, and depending on who they went with, it would hint to us what they value at that position. And so, Denzel Perriman, they obviously value run defense. And also, here's a fun fact. Now we have two San Diego Chargers on this team. Joey Bosa was the last one, and now Denzel Perriman, who was drafted by the San Diego Chargers, is back on this team. Plus, we still have two San Diego Chargers that are coaches. We have Nick Hardwick, and we also have Jim Harbaugh. But today, I am going to go into detail about how good this signing is, an update on Mike Williams and his free agency, and also how the Chargers free agency has played out thus far and what that means for the draft. So make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content, bro. It helps me out so much. And now let's start off with this Denzel Perriman signing because... I said he was good at run defense. I wasn't kidding. 17th best run defending linebacker in the NFL this past season. But not only that, he had 25 pass rushing reps this past season, and he had eight pressures on those 25 reps. That means that when he was given the opportunity to rush the passer this past season, he was basically 33% likely to get a pressure on the quarterback. That's a really good rate. And at 31 years old, man, he, he has shown that he can still play in this league. I mean, just this past season, he has three grades that rank out to be an elite PFF grade at his position. And also he had an elite, two elite run defense grades, and he's been a pretty good tackler this past season, but where he struggles, obviously, is the coverage. He's not a very good coverage linebacker. We knew that if you saw my video last week, I said that he was actually one of the worst in the NFL. 13th worst coverage grade this past season and to put into perspective Kenneth Murray he had a 55.7 coverage grade that was around like 44th worst in the NFL and also Denzel Perriman he had four penalties this past season so he's still getting penalized but Denzel Perriman he's going to be coming in on a one-year contract worth Three million dollars is what we know right now, but I'd imagine that that contract is incentivized. So he's probably getting closer to around like two million in guarantees with incentives to hit that mark of three million because I can't imagine that he signed for more than Gus Edwards did. But the reason why I love this signing so much is because yeah, you're getting older at linebacker, but Denzel Perriman, he basically gives you what Kenneth Murray was giving us this past season. And he's going to be a lot cheaper than Kenneth Murray was because look at that contract that he got by the Titans. Thanks, by the way, because now we have a good comp pick coming up to us. Now we can start to see kind of that Joe Hortiz strategy playing out. You're churning that bottom of the roster with these specifically these low value positions like linebacker. You let Kenneth Murray walk for more money than the stopgap guy that you are signing in free agency. And it gives you just about the same thing that Kenneth Murray does. This is a big, big win. So it's a big win in the comp pick formula, but I also think this may be kind of indicative of what Joe Hortiz's strategy is for the draft as well, because he's waiting to get those premier players at the positions of need in the draft. That's where he's going to address those positions because you want those guys younger with the better prospects. Ideally, those are going to be the better players, right? The better prospects the earlier in the draft and he's going to get them on lower contracts so instead of addressing those positions in free agency those premier positions you just address the lower value positions in free agency and then you draft the higher positions just from free agency and how, how it's going so far that's what it looks like Joe Hortiz's ultimate strategy is, okay? The comp pick formula with these free agent signings, right? We talked about Denzel Perriman, Kenneth Murray, how that plays out, but also waiting to address these big holes at the premier positions in the draft. And I also expect them to address the interior offensive line and free agency, specifically center. I think they have to go out and get a center. Look for Bradley Bozeman, even a guy like Connor Williams, even though he's coming off an injury, he is probably the best center. I've already told you about Bradley Bozeman. He was really bad in pass protection last year, had the most sacks allowed by an offensive lineman, but he's got the connection to Joe Hortiz and it's just kind of a stopgap guy. And like I said, 
they're probably going to address that position in free agency, but then also address it in the draft. And they're probably going to get a long-term starter at center in the draft while also just kind of filling that position with depth in free agency. Because interior offensive line, just until this off season, really, it's not been one of those premier positions. And it's kind of becoming that because we've seen all of these interior offensive linemen, both centers and guards, they're getting really big money. So I do expect the Chargers to still address that position in the uh, free agent market, but they're not going to be guys that are going to be coming in and starting and playing significant playing time because I think, you know, look at the tight ends. They're going to get significant playing time because we use tight ends a lot, but also because they're good enough to. So why would you not play Hayden Hurst and Will Disley? They are probably going to get significant playing time. And also Denzel Perriman is going to get significant playing time on this team. And Gus Edwards obviously is going to get a lot of playing time. So is Alohi Gilman. Although I do expect the Chargers to still get another safety in free agency. They got a lot of money now. So maybe look for a guy like Justin Simmons. I mean, the Chargers right now, we are top 10 in cap space. I think we have 20 28 freaking million dollars to spend and so look at the guys on defense we could still sign a linebacker look at these low value positions like i've been telling you i mean linebacker defensive line safety i would expect them to address a cornerback like a veteran cornerback i'm still wanting tredavious white by the way and while i am kind of expecting them to be active in free agency from you know this point out like they're they're still going to be signing guys because they got 28 million dollars I don't know how much of that they're actually going to spend in this free agency because they also have 51 million in dead cap, which is second most in the NFL. A lot of that is because of those big four names like Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen. Still got a lot of dead cap there, but also because JC Jackson. He is a big part of that dead cap. So it's just crazy to me. I mean, we still have $28 million left to spend even though we have 51 that is just, you know, dead, nothing. It's going to be really interesting to see if they do address wide receiver in free agency, just because that position is like so barren right now. Really only have Josh Palmer and Quentin Johnston. Neither of those guys are going to be wide receiver one on this team next year. So do they want to bring back Mike Williams? Because he could probably come in on like a $7 million contract. I mean, please, Mike, come for $7 million that pause but he is being interviewed right now for the Steelers the Jets and the Panthers he's gonna have visits with all of those teams I don't know if the Steelers would really go for him because you know that skill set is a bit redundant in that offense because they have George Pickens he's basically like a younger version of Mike Williams I mean at least he gives you what Mike Williams gives you so unless you want two of those guys on the outside I don't really see that as a fit the Jets is a much better fit and then the panthers he'd be like a security blanket for bryce young but does mike williams want to go to a team like that i don't know if he wants to go to a, a contender maybe he would pick the jets but if he wants to come back to the chargers i would love to have mike williams back if the price is right i mean i'm not trying to get into a bidding war with a team like the jets or the panthers for mike williams but that skill set that he has, he's one of the best jump ball receivers in the league, hopefully, if he's, you know, coming back from injury healthy. But also, he's really good in the intermediate part of the field as well. I mean, let's not forget that. He's not just a jump ball receiver. But the more I think about it, man, I just don't think that this team is going to want to bring back Mike Williams because it is a premier position. They don't want to address that position in free agency with these older veteran players, especially one coming off an injury, and they want to get younger with premier talent. They're going to do that in the draft. But if you do want to get a free agent wide receiver, it, like it's not going to stop you from drafting this position highly still because, you know, we do need a lot of talent in this wide receiver room. I think look for more of a guy like Tyler Boyd. He's going to be getting the same amount of money ish that Mike Williams is going to get. He's younger and uh, he gives you more of what Keenan Allen would give you. He replicates that style of play rather than a Mike Williams kind of play. Whether Mike Williams comes back or we sign Tyler Boyd in free agency, it's not going to stop me from drafting a wide receiver. Just like taking these two tight ends in free agency would not stop me from drafting a tight end. So as of right now, this is what it's looking like. I think it's wide receiver drafted highly, offensive line drafted highly, and cornerback drafted highly. And then later on in like day three of the draft, it's going to be more of the linebackers, more of tight ends, 
safeties even. I think a lot of defensive backs get drafted by the Ravens because they really, they go for best player available a lot. I mean, the Ravens were one of those teams that they legitimately did draft the best player available. I mean, just look at Kyle Hamilton, but it just really is feeling like right now, based on how they've gone in free agency, that the draft strategy is to draft those premier positions high. That's just what I think based off how they have approached free agency thus far. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you didn't see my video yesterday, you can click right here. I talked all about a possible Vikings trade and how we could get Marvin Harrison Jr.